gusty winds, freezing oceans, plunging temperatures. Welcome to the Earth's South Pole. Despite being mostly covered with ice, the land here is desert dry. The most abundant source of water at the South Pole, its ocean, is also covered with ice for part of the year. But its sea teems with life, and I'm here to study it. Hi, I'm Dr. Lucy Hawkes. As a biologist, I study all sorts of living things found in and around the sea. You may be surprised to learn that many different animals live on and around the land near the South Pole, the continent Antarctica. Animals like seals, penguins. Did someone say penguins? That's why I'm here, to learn more about penguins. They're my favorite animals. In fact, they're... Ah, just a moment. Before you go any further, why don't you introduce yourself to our listeners? Um, yes, right. <laughs> Hi there. I want to be a marine biologist someday. So I am trying to learn all I can. And there's a lot to know. There is a lot to know, but I'm certain that you're up to the challenge. And you've come to just the place to learn about penguins. One of the most well-known penguins, the Emperor Penguin, lives in Antarctica. Fantastic! Let's go! Is it okay if our friends at home listen in too, Dr. Lucy? Absolutely. It's always great to meet others who want to learn more about nature. So let's get ready to explore the world of penguins. Track one, what are penguins? <laughs> get started. I'm so excited to learn everything there is to know about penguins. Let's start with those penguins walking over there. Wonderful. I'm glad to help. Now, there are several kinds of penguins that live in Antarctica. Those there, they're emperor penguins. They are simply fascinating birds. Birds? Like robins and seagulls? But seagulls and robins don't look anything like penguins. Good observation. There are many, many types of birds and they are all sorts of sizes and shapes and colors. So how do you know? What makes a bird a bird? Well, let's see if you can figure the first thing out. Let's think of a bird you might be familiar with. How about a chicken? <coughs> Excellent choice. What do you think of when you think of chickens? How about baby ones? Oh, a chick. Let's see, chicks are baby chickens and they come from eggs. Good job. You just named one thing that all birds have in common. Birds lay and are hatched from eggs. Baby penguins, which are also called chicks by the way, lay and are hatched from eggs. See, you're on your way to becoming an amazing marine biologist already. Thanks. But there has to be other things that all birds have in common. Definitely. Let's see if you can guess another one. I'll give you a hint. When something doesn't weigh very much, we say it's as light as a... What do you think that might be? Oh, I think I know this one. A feather. Birds have feathers. That's right. Penguin chick feathers are mostly grey, but really fluffy and downy. And adult penguins' feathers are smoother and black and white, but they both have feathers. All birds do. Penguin feathers look different from a lot of other birds' feathers. They're a lot smaller than, say, chicken feathers, for example. <coughs> but they are made of the same stuff. It's called Keratin. Can you say that word? Listeners, you try to say the word too. It's keratin. I'll try. Keratin. How did I do? Perfect. Now, lots of animals have keratin somewhere on their bodies, 
even people. Really? Where? Keratin is in your skin, your hair and your finger and toenails. It makes them strong, but flexible, able to bend. That's neat. I'll try to remember it. Does keratin do the same thing in a bird's feathers? That's a great question. Yes, keratin in feathers helps to make them strong and flexible. And sometimes it does more. Keratin in a penguin's feathers helps to keep it dry when it's swimming. It acts to make them waterproof. That's really cool. Actually, I'm not sure cool is the word I'd use for penguin feathers, because the other thing that this bird's feathers do is trap heat. A penguin's body makes heat, and its feathers hold that heat close to its body. Cozy. Yes, nice and toasty. I'm sure you've noticed that both you and I have coats on. Yes, and hats and gloves too. We're prepared for the Antarctic cold. Penguins don't need a coat or other warm clothing because their bodies have things to help keep them warm, like feathers. So penguins need to keep warm too? Like people? They do. That's actually another thing that all birds have in common. Huh? What do you mean? Birds are what scientists call warm-blooded. That means that their bodies stay about the same temperature all the time. Other animals, like fish, for example, are sometimes called cold-blooded. The temperature of a fish's body gets warmer if the water is warmer and colder if the water is colder. But a bird doesn't, huh? That's something I didn't know. And now you do. So, birds come from eggs and are warm-blooded and have feathers. But they're still really different from other birds like seagulls and chickens. What makes penguins so special? Oh, lots. For one thing, they're flightless. That's a fancy word that means that they can't fly, even though they have wings. Penguins use them for something else. Can you guess what? I'll give you a hint. Sometimes people call penguin wings flippers. Let us know what you think. How does a penguin use its flippers? Swimming! Yes, swimming! Penguins use their flippers to push their bodies through the water, swooping and gliding beneath the waves. Emperor penguins are amazing swimmers. Really? What makes them amazing swimmers? Emperor penguins can swim deeper than any other kind of penguin. They can dive about 1,640 feet below the surface of the ocean. That's about as deep as a skyscraper is tall. Whoa, to go that far? It seems like they would have to be underwater for a really long time. Well, they do have to come up for a breath eventually. As birds, penguins can't breathe underwater like fish can, but they can stay underwater for up to 32 minutes before they have to come back up to grab a breath. There isn't another bird on planet Earth that can do that. Not even another kind of penguin? No, not even another kind of penguin. All penguins are good swimmers, but emperor penguins swim the deepest and stay underwater the longest. But that's not to say that each and every kind of penguin isn't special. I'm sure they are, but how? Hmm, I think a good way to meet some other kinds of penguins is to take a tour of the places on Earth where penguins live. What do you say? Let's do it! Okay, just make sure you bring along a good imagination and maybe a little sunscreen. Wait. Did you say to bring sunscreen? Come on, I'll explain on the way. Track two. Where do penguins live? Here we are 
our first stop, the Galapagos Islands. What do you think? Dr. Lucy, it's so warm. There can't be any penguins that live here, can there? I thought all penguins live where it's cold. Ah, you're not alone. When people think of penguins, they usually think of ice and snow. But some penguins live where it's quite warm, like the Galapagos penguins that you can see swimming in the ocean over there. And while we're on the subject of things people get wrong about penguins, they also think of the North Pole. But there are no penguins at the Earth's North Pole. None? Not one, which honestly is good for the penguins because you know what does live near the North Pole? What? <gasps> polar, polar bears. bears! Right! Polar bears live near the Earth's North Pole, but penguins don't. Penguins live near the South Pole, like where we just were, in Antarctica. Correct! Almost all penguins live in Earth's southern hemisphere. What does that mean? Hmm. To help answer that question, I need you to imagine a big ball. Can you imagine a big ball? Okay. I can see a big ball in my mind. Now what? Now, imagine that there is a circle that runs around the ball's middle kind of like a belt. We call this imaginary line the equator. It divides the earth into a top half and a bottom half and everything in the bottom half, that is below the equator, is called the southern hemisphere. Oh, I see. And all penguins live there in the southern hemisphere? Almost all. Some of the Galapagos Islands are above the equator. So we can't say that the penguins that live on these islands officially live in the Southern Hemisphere, but they're the only ones that don't. I see. That makes sense. Whew. Dr. Lucy, it sure is warm in the Galapagos. It's much warmer here than in Antarctica. I definitely don't need my coat anymore. You have that right. Temperatures on the Galapagos Islands can reach about 82 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about the temperature of a warm summer day in many places. Galapagos penguins like it a lot warmer than emperor penguins do. Wow, that's definitely not like cold, icy Antarctica. You're right. Temperatures there are below freezing <laughs> most of the time. And living in different temperatures isn't the only difference between emperor and Galapagos penguins. The birds that live here are a lot smaller than their Antarctic relatives. They're only about 20 inches tall, about as tall as a medium-sized dog. In fact, emperor penguins get to be taller than a Galapagos penguin when they're still chicks. Emperor penguins are about 47 inches tall, about the same size as a six-year-old child. Wow, that's a little taller than me. That is one big baby. It sure is. Emperor penguins are the biggest penguins on Earth. Adult emperor penguins can get to be about four feet tall. That's over half the size of a fully grown adult. So, Dr. Lucy, if the emperor penguin is the biggest penguin, is the Galapagos penguin the smallest penguin? Nope. The title of the world's smallest penguin goes to... The Little Penguin! <laughs> that sounds like a perfect name for the world's smallest penguin. Imagine a penguin that's tiny enough to snuggle into a shoebox. The teeny tiny little penguin lives near the countries of Australia and New Zealand. It grows to only about a foot in height. It's so small that it has another name too, the fairy penguin. And if its size weren't magical enough, its feathers are also blue in colour. Blue? That is pretty magical! Why are their feathers blue? Blue feathers help to keep the little penguin safe 
from being hunted by other birds like eagles. Eagles have great vision, but they have a somewhat hard time spotting the little penguin from above. And that's because the bird's blue feathers help it to blend in to the blue of the ocean. Blue feathers just sound so fancy. If you think blue feathers are fancy, you should see some of the fanciest penguins. Take the macaroni penguin. A long crest of yellow and orange feathers flows from its head. They kind of look like human eyebrows gone haywire. <laughs> Sounds awesome. Why are they called macaroni penguins? Well, early human explorers thought the feathers on macaroni penguins looked like the macaroni feathers found on men's hats at the time. And people used to sing a song called Yankee Doodle, and it went something like this. He stuck a feather in his hat and called it macaroni. Those are the macaroni feathers that we're talking about. Yay, Dr. Lucy! That was really good. Oh, uh, thank you very much. Oh, and then there are the rock hoppers. <gasps> they have fun yellow feathers on either sides of their eyes. But in between, they have a mohawk of black feathers that stick straight up. Both of these penguins live on islands and on rocky coasts in the Southern Hemisphere. Oh, a coast, by the way, is the place where the land and the ocean touch each other. I had no idea there were so many kinds of penguins and that they all look so different from one another. Those are just some of the penguins that share our planet with us. There are 18 different kinds, each one more amazing than the next. 18? Wow! Yep, penguins are not just any birds, but... Hey, it is really hot here at the equator. 